that morning I was driving into work uh, like I normally did every morning uh, and I was a couple blocks away from Broadway because our office was right on Broadway uh, it was a couple blocks away and I had my radio on listening you know to the morning music I had my AC on uh, windows rolled up so you know kind of outside ambient noise I couldn't really hear anything but I distinctly remember hearing this loud kind of like an explosion when I pulled up in my normal parking spot I remember getting out of my vehicle and there was a couple people congregated on the corner uh, and they were kind of looking up uh, in the direction of, of where the towers are standing and you know we were looking up and you see smoke billowing from the top of the World Trade Center so I remember walking into the office and our admin chief, his name was Mr. Martinez, I remember him, he was on the phone, and I remember walking into the office and I told him, I said, hey, Marty, I said, uh, did you hear that explosion? There's, you know, and something crashed into like the World Trade Center. People were saying it was uh, like a Cessna or something. And he said that he had no idea, he didn't hear anything. So uh, he goes over to the window and he's looking and he's, he's kind of like, wow, you know, I didn't hear it. He's like, well, you know, it's, it's crazy. So I go into the captain's office, and as I'm looking for this paperwork, I hear Marty just screaming. Uh, and he yells out for me to come and run to the window. And as I'm, like, I drop what I'm doing and I'm running, that's when the building shook at first, and then you hear the impact of the second plane that hit. As soon as, you know, we, the, like the concussion wave kind of hit the building, because again, we were only one block east of, of the towers at that time. The, the building shook, and I remember telling uh, Marty, saying, we have to get out of this building right now. I said, I'm gonna run up all the way to the top and just tell people to forget the elevators and just make sure that they go down the ladder wells. Uh, so I did that, ran to the top. I believe it was, I don't know, maybe 15, 16 stories. Uh, and of course, you know, my adrenaline's pumping, so I'm just, running up, opening doors and hallways, screaming for everyone to just take the stairwell down, going up to the next floor and doing all the way, doing all the way up and then all the way down. But by the time I got to the lobby, and I remember running out of the ladder well, the scene that was unfolded like outside of the building was something like a movie. I mean, it was people just running everywhere, screaming, there's debris, paper flying in the air, uh, just that acrid smell. And I remember I, I run out and I grab the police officer and I tell him that I'm a United States Marine, that I work upstairs in a recruiting office. Was there anything that he wanted me to do? Once he came to, he asked me, he said, listen, just run down to one police plaza. He's like, and start pulling out the police barricades and just start pulling them out across Broadway to trying to block civilian traffic. He's like, there's going to be tons of emergency service vehicles fire trucks, ambulances, you name it, and of course you can hear all the sirens in the distance and everyone trying to respond, first responders. And I remember pulling out the police barricades and, you know, traffic is gridlocked, it's stopped. Uh, I don't know how, somehow we were able to deviate the, all the cabs and, and the buses and just civilian traffic away uh, from Broadway um, and just allow emergency service vehicles. I remember as I was standing there uh, amongst the barricades that I had helped set up, you know, obviously I would turn and kind of look up at the, at, the, at the Twin Towers, and I remember watching people hold hands and jump. And to me, I, I can't imagine how how awful I, I can't even find the the words to describe it but the fact that those people would choose to jump to their deaths because they didn't want to burn or either that or they knew that there was no hope for them to be rescued they chose to hold hands and jump and it wasn't just one or two people. I mean, I saw multiple people just jumping from the World Trade Center and electing that that's the way that they wanted to go. And I just, in my mind, I just find that it just, just incredible. Like that, they chose that was that 
that action was the lesser of those two evils. I remember we're standing there, and then all of a sudden, the ground starts shaking. And I remember hearing like this rumbling as the ground shakes, and I remember looking behind me, and all of a sudden, all I see is the police officers that were behind me just kind of motioning for everyone to start running and just to move. And that's where I kind of looked over my shoulder, and you could see the tower starting to come down, the first tower. And again, you know, it was just, it was surreal. So I remember just turning and just bolting with everyone. Just everyone just starts running and screaming again, something out of Hollywood, something that you see in a movie. And we're, we're running, we're running, and all of a sudden I remember looking back and just the, the smoke and the debris, just the cloud, just engulfing and consuming everyone. It, it changed my life in the fact that, uh, you know, you, you never know when something is going to happen. You know, you, and you have to take, you can't take things for granted, obviously. Um, you know, that morning, again, you know, just like your average American, your average New Yorker, you get up, go to work, you know, carry out the, the plan of the day, as we like to say in the Marine Corps. And just like that, you know, your life changes. I think that day basically just answered any doubt whatsoever in my mind of what I wanted to do the rest of my life. Because I knew, I obviously, at that point, that the United States, our military, in some way, shape, or form, you know, we were going to go ahead and, and take the fight, you know, to whoever it was, you know, uh, that caused us, which, you know, we, know, we now know. Uh, and so it just solidified it. Uh, and so I knew that there was no question in my mind, and I knew that eventually, once I was done recruiting duty, that I'd be able to get in there and, and you know, do my part and feel... Uh, feel a little, I don't know if more proud is the right word, but feel a little more justified being that I was, you know, a native New Yorker and that, you know, uh, a little more personal to me and that because I was there that day when it happened. And I tip my hat uh, to all those, you know, Marines, uh, all service members who are serving now uh, post 9-11. Um, You, you know, prior to that, there were, there were many reasons why people joined the military. You know, so I'm sure some uh, joined because they were patriotic. There was other reasons to do it. You know, uh, job skills, trade skills, you know, the ability to go to college, maybe do a little traveling. Um, and after 9-11, you know, uh, I don't think there's a down too many people's minds on why they decided to join and raise their right hand when they could have easily said no way not me I'm good you know so I, I do I definitely tip my hat uh, to all those who decided it you know that they wanted to answer the call and you know do something for their country